Hi folks, Dave Woodard, the man from the East here. Uh, that comment that I just put up at the beginning from Roman Candle, you know, I've been in this Fen community for quite a while now. And I really didn't have any faith in people seeing the actual true solve that's here, that I've given. Uh, until now, I, I watched a video about the Bishop Riddle that Roman Candle did. And I gave him an answer and he said, that's cool. I was like, oh my God, this is a human being. It's a guy that I would sit down and have a beer with that I could talk to and would actually say, I understand what you're saying, Dave. And I've dealt with a lot of bullshit from the community. And every single one of you out there knows what that bullshit is. So when I start to explain something, like I think, okay, the Fen community is going to understand this. I think I've said it in a, a reasonable way, and I know I have a lot of videos out there, and there's a lot of information spread out in a ton of different videos, but the actual true solve with the Kent and Esther cross that I found, that magic right there, not everybody's going to see it, and this is what, this is what upsets me that, I mean, it doesn't even really upset me, it just... It gets frustrating because I can see it and I, I know I can pull those clues and hints and they stay and I retain them and I, and I glue them together in my, in my mind. But a lot of people can't do that. This is this poem that Forrest Fenn created. Actually, he actually said it at the beginning of his book. I don't want to dwell into it too much, but that right there, that little saying, okay, life's a game of poker. Happiness is a pot. Fake deals, four cards, and a joker. And you play whether you like it or not. I believe right there that Forrest Fenn is talking about a, a group of people, a group of your friends. There's always somebody in that group that, that's a joker, that kids around, that always has the wise ass remark. Um, that's me. I always have something crazy or something to say, switch words. That's what Forrest Fenn is talking about there. There's a joker usually, and that's the guy that's going to end up solving the poem. So if you're a good wise ass, I haven't seen any really good wise asses in the Fen community. They throw out their stupid comments, which is which is fine. That's the way they are. But to be a real good wise ass and a, and a joker, um, to understand that that wittiness that you come up with something right away, like it, like my old. And it's in one of my previous videos. I was taking my sister to the airport. And there were three lanes heading into Boston. And I chose the middle lane. Everybody else is cruising. I'm stuck. I'm like, uh, I feel like Superman. I got in the slowest lane. I'm like, okay, that's slowest lane. My sister laughed, thought it was funny. It's, and it came up with it like that, okay? And it had nothing to do with the solve. It was just something I... Your mind works a little different way when you're a good ball buster and you can, you can come up with those witty sayings and change words. That's what Forrest Fenn did in his book here. So, that, now that you understand kind of where he's coming from, in that, I give credit to Roman Candle for this clue that I add to my collection. Because what I do, knowing that the cross was Forrest Fenn's with Kent and Esther, and you join them together, the meld of two people, meld the names with the cross. It took me to another dimension in my mind, a place I would not visit again until the grave marker entered into my life. Years later, I would meld these thoughts into one, the sum of which would change my life, and I am coming to that. Okay, Forrest, this quote right here talks about melding Kent and Esther together. The grave marker entered into my life. Years later, I would meld these thoughts into one. So he's talking about Kent and Esther joining them together to make canasta. And he said, the sum of which would change my life. The sum, if you look that up, sum is principle. Principle Fen, if you look up that story, his promotion was a really big deal because he got his own parking spot in front near the door where he went in. I remember standing there while he hammered the wooden sign into the ground. Mr. Fenn Principal. 
but I can't say the sign didn't make a difference in my life because it did. This is just one of the crazy cool connections that pulled this whole thing together. Principle, sum, the sum of which would change his life, the grave marker, it all fits. It's all beautiful. You take, I had to figure out what all the clues were in the books to line up to that cross. I already knew that, that Ken and Esther were Canasta. You might as well stay home and play Canasta if you can't figure out the first clue. So, not knowing who Kent and Esther are, I had to figure that out. And again, as I said, I figured out on Esther first. You know, I just want to concentrate on, see, I jump around a lot because I have so many things going on up there and so many clues to give you. But let's just do Kent. Okay, Aunt Esther was a homely girl on the cross. That's simple. There's many things in the stories that bring it up. And I have the other book that brings in Aunt Esther with the nickel under the grave marker. This is all there. That's a whole different side of all the different clues. But Force Fan wanted you to figure out who the two main characters were. The two people that can keep a secret. Okay, if one of them is dead. And those two people are... The reason, he said, I can keep my secret where? That secret, he's keeping his secret with the two people that can keep the secret. Kent and Esther. So Kent, all the things that brought me to finally realize who Kent was, was first, first thing right off, looking for Lewis and Clark is actually supposed to be looking for Lois and Clark. And as I said, that's Clark Kent. If anybody doesn't know who Clark is, Looking for Lewis and Clark is looking for Lois and Clark, Kent. So that's that connection right there. A big one in his first book. But in that story, there's also... The wonderful core of discovery. And you spell core... Corpse. So you're discovering the corpse, right? That's what it's supposed to be. It's not really a corpse there, folks. It's only Kent and Esther joined together, melded the names together... When he thought, when the graveyard, when the grave marker came back into his life years later, this, he says it all to us. But all of these characters that he brings up, those are the main two characters. So Kent, looking for Lewis and Clark, is looking for Lois and Clark. Then I found... I found that recently about the corp, Corpse of Discovery. But I found out through another ally of mine that the Sloan Museum is in Kent. And I'm like, oh my God, that's cool. Roman Candle like, was asking a, a question and I answered it. Within five minutes, I found it. But people go down these rabbit holes and they start looking into the dates that they came out or the books or you're, if you're reading a whole big book of something else, it's not going to get you anywhere. The things for us brought up in the stories were just examples. Most of them. I mean, some of the hints that he gives you. Yes. You can, you can go into those a little further, but as far as the main clues to pull it in, you have Kent on his cross, which is, Sloan Museum in Kent. You have the bishop, right? The bishop's riddle that someone said Forrest Fenn solved. If you look up the bishop's riddle, the book, it talks about the murder of that nun at the abbey in Kent. That's all you need to know for the bishop's riddle. That's it. And I, I thank Roman Candle for that. He seems like a, a he wants answers. And that, that's the kind of people that I'm looking for. To give my information to and say, hey, this is so fucking cool. You need, you just need to 
like look at this and look at how this pulls together and this pulls together. But as far as Kent, Clark Kent, keep going. It says uh, in the third book, Clark was getting a lot of publicity, okay, and winning awards at different shows. Clark Kent was a reporter. Forrest Ben sprinkled these clues throughout the whole book for us to find. And whether or not you want to believe it or not, this is the actual solve. No one else, anywhere else, any other solve has a cross that was so important. To Forrest Fenn, if you read My War for Me, he will tell you about how important that cross was to him and how he was going to figure out how to use it in his final hiding place. And it's brilliant, folks. He ended up using... Superman, Clark Kent, and Aunt Esther from the show. And the Aunt Esther, I've given examples. If you go back in my videos and look at the Homely Girl video, um, that was just Sanford and Son. I figured out who the Homely Girl was. But there's other things I found along the way also. As far as Miss Fashion Maven, uh, look up Aunt Esther for some of the fashion. Her, They sell her pocketbook. They sell her hat. Forrest Fan was talking to um, Bella Asbug and her hat. She always had the hat. She's another one that he's he's bickering back and forth, just like Fred Sanford did. All of these connections that bring the Kent and Esther on that cross to Forrest Fan's stories. I've asked people. I like Roman Candle just found that 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 great clue right there. But I've asked folks to help and look. Not until you realize. What you're looking for in the books, are you going to realize, holy shit, this is it. And you know, looking that up, I just, and Jackass McQuaid's there, the twin brothers, uh, Daryl and Daryl, those jamokes say that I, I change my solve. Yes, I do. I change it to even better because I told everybody right from the beginning, this is how I interpreted it. It brought me to the final resting place. I wasn't sure who Kent and Esther were. Never mind. I knew the Canasa connection, that the treasure was there. But the actual, and this is great. This is great. In the poem, right? If you know my poem, like I've explained, from there is Palisade Sill, right? You have to know where the there is in the poem to know where your search area is. From there, it's no place for the meek, which is the old man mountain face right down. Okay, that's the no place for the meek. From there, it's no place for the meek. The end is ever drawing nigh. That's the one that I couldn't, it took me like, I still reel with it a little bit as far as wondering if it's the cliff. Will you come up to the end of the cliff? Because it's, even though you're at the bottom, it's Palisade Sill Cliffs. So a cliff, you come up to the end, and you're at the end where the cliff is. That's the end is ever drawing nigh. You're close. But then I started to realize, okay, maybe it's the end of the map. He's, because he says, begin at where warm waters halt. And then the end of the map portion is coming up real close. But, you know, you have your heavy loads of water high down further, which is gravel pit lakes, and uh, one lake is higher than the other. Simple, but don't go down to the lake. That's what he says. There'll be no paddle up your creek, just heavy loads of water high. Don't go down to Maverick Creek. So, but the, this is beautiful. The end is ever drawing nigh, okay? 
the end. I've explained in my store, like in my videos, of what a palisade is. A palisade is a row or uh, enclosure, a, a defense of wooden stakes or wooden poles. Okay? So knowing what a palisade is in nature, you understand that it's a wall or a row of tree stumps. If you look at the first book in the epilogue where he has the axe and the canopy of stars, there's a row of stumps all along the back. Okay, this was going to be in my Dumb as a Stump video about a few of the vloggers, but I'm, I'm going to tell you now. I want people to understand this is the actual true solve. Palisade Sill, New Mexico, Cimarron Canyon. That row of stumps in the back where the epilogue is, that is an actual palisade. That is the palisade in the first book that I missed. And I just recently found that because I go back and I look at the stories and I try to figure out exactly how it fits in. And so many people out there could be doing that right now. If you know what to look for, between Palisade Silk, between Superman, between your window connection, which is the devil's mailbox right there from Palisade Silk parking area, this all connects so fucking beautifully. And I thought people would be able to retain the information I give them and, and keep it together. But seeing a little bit in each video, they don't get it. They don't understand it. Or they just don't want to lose their viewers on their channel. I don't give a shit about their viewers. I really don't. I'm not here to monetize my YouTube channel. I'm here to give closure to the Fen community and a half a million searchers out there who have looked for Forrest Fen's treasure. And they did not find it. Jack did not find it. I can prove all of this. And I will prove it. But the information, if you... I keep finding more and more, like I said. You could be finding more and more if you know what to look for in these stories. The second palisade in the second book is son uh, Joseph Sunhawk. Teepees that he's trying to sell for his friend. All that, it's a defense closure of wooden sticks or, or tree trunks or trees. And the palisade in the third book, he, he spells it right out for you as far as a palisade. He said, it's a row. He says to a secluded parking area with a row of Palo Verde trees. Um, that's the palisade right there. And then within the next line, he says 300 feet from the house. Palisade Sill is 300 feet high, folks. It's so fucking beautiful the way he did it and he incorporated. And I have a hundred, a couple of hundred more clues to pull all this together. But you, there's so many I miss that I keep finding that I want, I want others to enjoy a chance to, to say, hey, Dave, I found this. I found this about another Palisade in the books. You folks have a chance right here to investigate Forrest Fenn's actual true solve and find something before I do that validates this amazing solve that Forrest Fenn created. So I just want you all to understand, and I want to give kudos to, to Roman Candle for finding that extra clue in Kent for me. I appreciate that. But if you want to look up something for Aunt Esther, if you want to look up something for Clark Kent, if you want to look up Palisade, um, any of it. Cimarron was all the spices. He left out cinnamon, the Cimarron. If you look at the brown brown stains on his pants that he got from sliding down the slide on the second floor. Out the second floor window. That right there, he was in Spanish class. If you look up brown... In Spanish, it's Maron, Cimarron. It's the, every, he sprinkled hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clues throughout these books. And he brought it in and other connections with the other author 
that he used his books from. And I will post that video eventually. But it's so I sh I told one of my my allies, and sh they looked up the information, and they're like, "Oh my God, there's so many connections with Vietnam, the belt buckles, the arrowheads collection." This other author that he took a lot of the stories from. They are seeing it in a different book, but I only looked at 20 pages in the book that I found. And his name, part of his name, is in part of Forrest Fenn's clues for the aberrations out on the edge. It's so it's so interconnected with a gigantic web of 15 years that I want you folks to have a chance at finding one or two or more clues out of the hundreds that Forrest Fenn put in there. So this video just goes out to, to Roman Candle. Thank you. And to all my other followers, I appreciate you um, following me. I, I appreciate the one thumbs up I get. I'm here for information to give to you. I'm not here for a, a big famous YouTube channel. Because there will be some kind of production company or book company or somebody, a movie company that will get in contact with me. And as soon as the lawyers find out what really happened here, like I said, that's when they're going to get a hold of me too, all the lawyers. So, folks, I appreciate you watching. Thank you. I am Dave Woodard, the man from the East. And I will see you, uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you.